Hey, what's up, world? It's your girl, Brittany. And today, I'm in somebody's random backyard out here in Austin with two really good friends, producers Nez and Rio. How are you guys doing? Yo, cool. So They're the duo behind one of the most triumphant records that's out right now, Schoolboy Q's Man of the Year. So tell me about how you guys linked up with Schoolboy Q and how Man of the Year came about and how, how you guys got wind of the chromatics cherry sample and how that all came together. Sure, sure indeed. Well, um, Q actually was um, the hype man for uh, Kendrick when we met him in Chicago years ago, man. And uh, we were able to play some music for him create a relationship, ended up uh, placing some stuff on his second project, Habits and Contradictions. And then from there, that kind of like, you know, spilled into working on his album. And uh, Man in the Year <coughs> actually came about with us just chilling um, in LA, listening to some music and uh, hearing that chromatic sample and just like taking it from there. And Real and I just, you know, knocked out the beat and uh, sent it to Q, he cut it that night. The rest was history. Yeah, the rest was history. <laughs> and, wait, and then you guys have four placements, though. You guys produce Gangsta, Fuck LA, and Californication, right? Yeah. Um. So after that first record, he was like, "Give me more." Well, two of those records are actually like two years old. Gangsta and Californication we had a while ago. A while ago, those were actually some of the first records cut for the project. Gangsta was like the first record. Yeah. And then uh, from there, Fuck LA and Man of the Year came later. Those two came like around the same time. Can you guys tell me about the first beat you guys made together collectively? We were um, in a room just kind of hanging out. And um, um, we kind of or organically really just were like, yeah, let's make a beat. Let's make something. And it was a, it, it was a dope beat too. It was like a Shirley Bassey record that we chopped up. And uh, it was dope. I mean, that, that's what kept us, kept us making beats together, so yeah. right. it just made sense. Right, and, and, and Summers, tell us about the summer of 07, where you guys just made beats every single day with, with the help of Mr. Jose Cuervo. And, and it was a very thoughty summer. <laughs> 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 yeah, man, we were um, fifth of Cuervo every day, large pizza, Burger King breakfast. That was the regimen. Beats on beats on beats on beats. I would recommend that. that diet. Yeah, <laughs> definitely not a solid diet, but like you know, living your life. But um, that's how we were living at that time. It was tight. We just get trash and just make beats all day. Trash and then making sure. Well, back then you didn't know about Pedialyte. No. But can you please tell the world about Pedialyte and and how it helps you every day? No, you gotta, Pedialyte yeah. is, is is the tool. It's the tool for the turn up. For the, you know for the. When, when you get slapped and, and you smack, you gotta you gotta have something to bring you back. You know what I'm saying? P like is, is, is God's gift for drunk people. You know what I'm saying? They made it for babies. You know it's good for them. <laughs> <laughs> That's my slogan. I'm sticking with that one right there. Slogan. P D like finna hit you up and be like, you wanna be you wanna be our adult sponsor. <laughs> for real, it's good for I babies. Mean, <laughs> you know it's good. You, know it's good. <laughs> you guys are actually working on your own project. Yes. Um, you guys doing it as a duo, or are you gonna do solo projects? Uh, as a duo. Okay. Yeah. So okay. just gonna um, basically we're gonna produce everything. You know, crowd our friends together that we rock with. Um, all kinds of music. Some of our music on there as artists. Um, it's gonna be just you know a little more of a look into what we're about and you know, where our soundscape is on. So, it'll be cool. And then we, you know, hopefully we'll hear you guys, you know, the sound behind more TDE productions, right, in the future? Yeah, for sure. Definitely gonna hear some more. Nice. You, uh, you dropped out of school. Was there ever a point in time that you were like, dog, I don't know if I made the right decision, or did y'all ever feel like kind of given up or felt defeated at times when you're doing your production? And well, I think it's more of a, uh, you have your good days and you have your bad days, but I never thought that, you know, chasing the, the music was like never not the way. I always thought like, you know, this is what we were, uh, this is what we were put on earth to do. 
and it just felt natural and it was like I couldn't really see myself doing anything else and I know real, you know, it's the happy. same way, yeah. It was really just about happiness, so even when you had those low moments, you know, you just always had, you know, music to just keep pushing. And, and bring you back. Yeah. And we've seen a, a lot of things, you know, in, in our experiences that made us believe when other people around us didn't, you know, and, you know, just a, you know, a lot of times in those low moments, it makes you work harder. And when you work harder, you end up making something dope. And, and that dope beat, you know, pushes you further, you know, in your career and pushes you, you know, in, in, in your faith and knowing that, you know, everything's gonna be, it's gonna be cool in the end. Yeah. Hey, yo, this is Nez and Rio. You watching Global Grind TV. Skirt. So cool. I mean, I feel like if I um, ever. Or ethnic or whatever it may be, you know what I'm saying, just find time to learn people and just learn about different people.